China is stepping up its military activity around Taiwan as tensions rise following the U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit. Beijing is preparing its biggest show of force around Taiwan in decades. The government in Taipei says it scrambled jets to warn off Chinese aircraft that entered its air defense zone. A number of Taiwanese ministry websites have come under cyber attack. Pelosi left Taiwan pledging Washington's ironclad commitment to defending democracy there. A trip that has set the region on edge. The Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, arrives in Taiwan, making her the highest-level American official to visit the island in 25 years. Pelosi's stopover was kept deliberately ambiguous, amid stark warnings from China and the threat of a military response. Despite reservations in the Biden administration, the White House insisted that Pelosi had a right to choose whether to visit. And choose she did. Today, our delegation, of which I'm very proud, came to Taiwan to make unequivocally clear we will not abandon our commitment to Taiwan and we are proud of our enduring friendship. Today, the world faces a choice between democracy and autocracy. America's determination to preserve democracy here in Taiwan and around the world remains ironclad. Beijing's response was furious. What Pelosi has done is by no means a defense or protection of democracy, but a provocation and violation of China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. China has vowed punishment. Under the One China principle, Beijing views the self-governing island as a breakaway province and has not ruled out reunification by force. It has announced a series of live-fire military exercises surrounding the island which Taiwan warns will amount to an air and sea blockade. But despite China's threats, Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen was resolute. Facing deliberately heightened military threats, Taiwan will not back down. We will firmly uphold our nation's sovereignty and continue to hold the line of defense for democracy. On the ground in the capital Taipei, opinions were divided. Some feared retaliation from China. After Pelosi's visit, Taiwan is now targeted. I think she's making trouble for us. Of course I am worried about military confrontation. While others were less concerned. I'm used to China's threats. I feel numb. I don't feel particularly nervous. I think that the media is exaggerating the matter. With Taiwan now effectively surrounded by Chinese military, fears of a new crisis in the Taiwan Strait are rising. All eyes are now on Beijing. Let's expand on this and bring in DW's Joyce Lee, who's in Taipei. Joyce, give us the latest. What's the situation right now? So Chinese Navy ships and military aircraft crossed the Taiwan Strait median line several times today. The drill was initially planned for, uh, to last for three days until Sunday, but the PLA announced today that they will extend the drill for one more day uh, until Monday. And uh, they added one more zone for live fire drills. So there's a total of seven zones right now, including an area just 20 kilometers from the southern city Kaohsiung. China often holds military drills in the Taiwan Strait, but what we're seeing now is something else entirely, isn't it? Why exactly are these latest exercises so worrying? Well, the drill is unprecedented. This is the first time Beijing tries to encircle the island like this. It's worth uh, noting that on China's social media Weibo and WeChat, Chinese citizens have expressed huge disappointment at uh, Beijing's lack of action to stop Pelosi from visiting Taiwan. Uh, many were expecting the PLA to shoot her plane down, but it didn't happen, of course. The public discontent is a huge blow to Xi Jinping's authority, especially when he's under pressure to look strong ahead of a party meeting later this year. Many fear the pressure could prompt uh, China to take even tougher measures against Taiwan, and the drills could be practicing for a future invasion. And how big are fears of an escalation, of an invasion, as you say? 
Well, um, the de facto uh, blockade means isolation for Taiwan. So uh, it's a direct challenge to free air and sea navigation. And Taiwanese fishermen rush to go back to uh, the ports for their safety. As for international flights departing and arriving in Taiwan, they have to fly alternative routes to avoid the danger zones. So you can see um, how dangerous it is now. And uh, Taiwanese officials say China's ambition is to turn the Taiwan Strait into non-international waters. If China got what it wanted, it would undermine peace and stability in the region. Um, but I bet you've been talking to people there in Taipei. Are, are people nervous about this situation, maybe accidentally or willingly going out of hand? Well, here in uh, Taipei City, the mood is generally calm uh, for now because people are just too used to China's threat. People are cautious but not too anxious. Uh, but in the southern region in Taiwan, uh, especially near the coast, uh, people are quite nervous about their safety. DW's Joyce Lee from Taipei. Thank you. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations is meeting in Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh. China and the U.S. are also joining the summit. The meeting has been overshadowed by Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. ASEAN Chair Cambodia has urged all sides to de-escalate tension in the Taiwan Strait. The regional bloc warned on Thursday that there could be a, quote, miscalculation and serious confrontation. Richard Haydarian is a political scientist and has written extensively about China's relations with Southeast Asian nations. And I asked him earlier how much the tensions over Taiwan would actually overshadow this meeting. Well, it's element of geography, right? I mean, Taiwan is actually perched at the interstices of Northeast Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, you know, the Philippines, the northern portions of the Philippines are separated from Taiwan by just, uh, you know, a very narrow strait, the Luzon Strait. There are a number of countries in the region, Thailand, Philippines, which are U.S. treaty allies. Some are partners like Singapore who could be dragged into a conflict if something happens. Now, both Taiwan and China have very robust economic relationship with a lot of countries in the region. Taiwan is a global semiconductor superpower. So what happens there could affect also supply chains around the region. So I think ASEAN will do its best to come up with a statement and at the same time on the sidelines informally engage both China, US and other parties to ensure that the situation will not get worse than it is. I think there's a lot of understanding that China has to put on some show to show to, uh, you know, to express its displeasure, but it has to be calibrated and not get out of control because then we're going to be in a very tough situation. It's lose-lose for everyone. Uh, you have had an eye on China for quite some time now. Now Beijing launched what may be the largest ever military exercises encircling Taiwan. Did you expect this? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, the idea of Xi Jinping not doing anything at all was completely out of question, right? I mean, he repeatedly warned Biden and the U.S. not to play with fire, right? And, and China doesn't want to look weak. I mean, Xi Jinping is facing economic slowdown at home. He's expected to get a third term in office later this year. Uh, but those are reasons for him to show something in return. I mean, to show a level of strength. But at the same time, I don't think Xi Jinping is looking for a massive conflict. And if, if there's a precedence we have to look at is in 1995, 1996, no? uh, when uh, we had the last time there was a major conflict in the Taiwan Straits. During that period, when China was actually way weaker than the United States compared to today, and they had a less nationalist leader like Xi Jinping compared to today, that time, the, the, the Chinese went as far as firing missiles close to the shores of Taiwan. I don't think we're there yet. So yes, the situation is warring in the South China Sea, warring around Taiwan. There are fears of blockade, further economic sanctions. But we have to keep things into perspective. We're still not even at the level of the 1995-1996 Taiwan Strait crisis. And we don't want to even get there, of course. Are, we don't want to get there. Um, you say that Xi Jinping doesn't want to get there, but many observers believe that an escalation, either by choice or by accident, is only a matter of time. So would you share that assessment? Yeah, that is why it's extremely important. And this is, in fairness, the Biden administration has also been doing that. They have super activated communication channels on both military and civilian level, because I think there's an anticipation that the probability for 
accidental clashes or some major incident, it's increasing by the day. And even if the Nancy Pelosi situation did not create a World War III, I think this is just an opening salvo in a very perilous episode in US-China relations as far as Taiwan is concerned. And in the meantime, you can see even within Taiwan, they're increasing divisions on these visits. And some people are asking whether we wanted this kind of expression of support by US because they could still get a lot of support without Nancy Pelosi visiting mm -hmm. them and provoking this kind of response from China. Interesting stuff. Richard Hedarian, thank you so much.